Appearance is everything. First impressions are made within a few seconds. Images can grab attention. They can trigger emotion, create trust, and drive the viewer to action. A website without images would be boring. This is tutorial number 10, Images. Welcome to Websites Made Easy with Candace. The tutorials in this series are based on the chapters of my book, I Need a Website, What Do I Do Now? If you want to follow along, you can purchase my book on Amazon.com. Visuals reinforce the power of your text to convey your message. And information, when coupled with an image, is retained longer. Images can highlight your business, your products, and your services. It imparts information instantly. It's a powerful marketing tool. People love pictures. But it's got to be good pictures because a blurry picture can make you seem unprofessional. What is imagery? It refers to any content which is not text. It can include still pictures such as photos, graphics, clip art, and line drawings. It also includes animation, pictures that are manipulated to appear as if they are moving. It includes video. Recorded video is very trendy right now. And audio is becoming very popular. Sound files can be added as part of the web content. Your viewer relates to not just what they see, but what they hear. What are the reasons for using images on your website? The first thing is your website's going to look a whole lot better. It's going to be more visually appealing. And when text is combined with images, you're going to get 94% more views. Readers process information faster with images and they retain that information longer. Images give credibility to your website. It just looks more professional. They also boost your SEO. That's your search engine optimization. It's how people find you, and it's very important. We're going to be discussing SEO in another tutorial. Google will rank your website higher if you've got good images. When people see images on your website, it encourages them to come back and look for more in the future. And also, viewers stay on your website a whole lot longer which reduces your bounce rate. The bounce rate is the amount of time before they leave your website. You want them to stay longer. You only have a few seconds to grab their attention and images allow you to do that. They will hold your viewers attention longer. So let's take a look at some guidelines. Images must have a purpose. What's the benefit of having the image on your website? Are you showing your storefront? That's a good one. Or maybe your employees or perhaps your products. The image should enhance the product or the service in such a way that the viewer knows instantly what you're selling. Is it handbags or men's shoes or food products? They need to understand what you're about quickly. And does it appeal to your target audience? What are you trying to sell to them? Maybe it's colorful hair dye, or perhaps you're selling wigs. You're trying to get their attention. And the image should support the text. It should go together. People remember text and images longer when they're used together. Another guideline is that it needs to relate to your viewers. It's got to draw attention 
to your message. And bright, vibrant colors will grab attention. Happy, smiling human faces are much more personal. People feel better about you when they see an image of someone smiling back at them. Looking directly at the viewer seems more honest. You want to convey that you are honest. Real people connect. Don't use models. Use real people. Make sure the pictures are candid and unstaged. You also want to use high quality photos. Sharp images are appealing. They're professional and they grab attention. Images should never be out of focus. If you choose a small image and then you try to blow it up, it's going to be blurry. And if it is, you need to dump it because you're going to look like an amateur if your images aren't good quality. The best format to use is JPEG because those files are small. And the loss of detail during compression, which we'll talk about soon, is minimal. PNG formats can be used, but that file size is larger. And speed is very important. You don't want to slow your website down. So stick with the JPEG files. Naming your image is also a good idea. If you include the author or a descriptive title or a caption under that image, it's going to help with Google searches. And the last guideline is optimization. You need to resize and optimize your images. As I said before, images take up a lot of load time. The bigger the image, the more load time. And the more images you have, the more it affects your load time. Google ranks websites by how fast they load. So you have to adjust your pictures for the web. It's a vital task. Everybody loves pictures. You've got to have pictures, but they've got to be optimized. A few words about copyright. Copyright is a federal law of the United States that protects original work. It is best to assume that all images are copyrighted. Don't take for granted that you can use them. Do your research. Copyright infringement is illegal and carries with it significant consequences, and you do not want the hassle. There are tens of millions of free, high-quality graphics and photos available. Use them, or even better, create your own. So how do you get images for your website. You can use original images. You can do them yourself, which is great for people pictures because they seem more real. Using too many pretty stock images feels fake. Your audience won't relate to them and might ignore them because there's so many similar photos on the web. The more you use genuine images, the more trustworthy you seem. You also don't have to worry about copyright issues, but most of us aren't photographers, and there are thousands of professional images that we can use. There are many websites with images that are in the public domain. They are free to use and free to modify. And the reason for this is because the image was never copyrighted by the author, or the copyright has expired. Some photographers release the copyright to the public domain. Carol Highsmith has donated over 100,000 photographs royalty-free to the Library of Congress, making them free for you to use. The copyright usage was given without restrictions, or the image was published before 1924. Another option is to use stock photos. Stock photos are beautiful. They're very professional. They're high quality images and they are offered for free, but most often there will be a fee attached. When you purchase the license to use this photo, you can use it any way prescribed by the licensing agreement. So let's talk about original images first. 
Here are some tips for taking pictures. It doesn't matter if you have a camera, a smartphone, or an iPhone. Give it a try. It's going to make your website more approachable. Use natural light. Avoid full sun or cloudy days. Morning is best or an hour before sunset. Don't use a flash. Keep the light source in front of you to avoid shadows. And always use a tripod. Focus whatever you're using. If it's a camera, use the lens control. If you have a smartphone, you can tap the viewfinder on the screen. Or if you have an iPhone, you can hold down the spot on the viewfinder and a yellow box will pop up, meaning that the focus is locked. Don't use the zoom. Get closer to your subject. And think about composition. Don't clutter the scene. Clean up that background. So many times you don't take a look at what's in the background. And choose either landscape or portrait. And then you're going to edit your photos. Whether it's to clean up the background or sharpen up the image. Photo editors help transform all your photos by correcting the color erasing blemishes, and eliminating all that stuff in the background that you forgot about, as well as so much more. Here are some free photo editors that you should check out. I have them listed for smartphones and iPhones. Give them a try. You'll be amazed at how much better your photos look when you edit them. So let's search for pictures available in public domain. I'm going to demonstrate on two websites, commons.wikimedia and flickr.com. There are other websites that you can use for public domain pictures. Most of them use the same formats. When I'm finished with this short demo, I'll show you some images that I got from public domain using the other websites. This is the main page. First thing you need to do is to log in. If you don't have an account, set one up. And then the second thing is to do a search for a picture. And I've been working with, with birds this week, as you can tell. I've been really into birds this week. So let's do a finch and let's see what they've got for a finch. What pictures? So let's see, there we go. And there is a saffron finch. Ah, it's beautiful. This is exactly what I want. It's got all the detail that I need. I could never take a photo like this. There are so many photos available. It's just wonderful that we have so many tools at our fingertips. So let's see what more details are. Gives you a little bit more. There's the picture. And if you drag down to licensing, you can share or remix, but you must give attribution. You've got to give credit to the author and provide a link to the license. So let's go back and let's download. Here's the picture we want and it says you need to do this. Show me how. They will give it to you and this is exactly what you want and I want the large file, the original file, and there it is. Couldn't be easier. So here's my fence. I took the, uh, the photograph and I put it in my photo editor and enhance the colors. You can see it's much more yellow and the reds are more dominant. According to the license, I have to specify not only the author's name and the license, but if I did make any remixes or if I enhanced it, I need to state that I did. So you can see on the bottom it says color enhanced. The other public domain uh, site that you want to visit is Flickr.com. Most of the pictures on Flickr.com are fee-based, so you want to make sure that you stay in the commons. So if you want, let's say, uh, let's do birds. We'll do birds again and see what they have. Now over here you'll see any license, because if I pick out this one bird, if I look down here, all rights reserved. That means it's copyrighted and I can't use it unless I buy it. So let's go back to the search and up here you want to say any license. You don't want any license. 
you want no known copyright restrictions. I like this one. I'm not too wild about using t these two birds. They're not, they're a little out of focus, but this one is really good focus. And I'll probably just use this bird. But let's see, we have the, uh, the creator. So no copyright. That means that I can do anything I want with it. Make sure you copy the name down. Let's download it. I want the, um, the original. That's a big size. Let's go with that. It's downloaded. And there it is. And when I go into the photo editor, I will photo edit the other two birds out. And I will use just this image. So here's the finished product. I took the other two birds out and I enhanced the, uh, the beak and the legs, made them a little bit more red. It looks nice. Here are some other websites that offer free imagery. Many people are happy to share their photos. Always credit the creator and always follow the guidelines for each photo. Read the fine print. Some images may be only used privately. Here are a few images that I got from some of those sites. Morgue file, Unsplash, Pixabay, Raw Pixel, Canva, Pixabay again. This is from PicJumbo freeimages.com and then finally here again on Flickr this is a spoon bill that I really think is nice. You may find a picture that's perfect for your website but it's not free. Believe me it happens. It happened to me. I knew instantly when I saw the picture that I now have on my home page of my website amazingwebsites.org that was the perfect picture for my website but it wasn't free so I ended up paying for it. You can find exceptional images for purchase or online. They are professional images of high quality and they work with all types of businesses. You don't have to worry about copyright issues either because you've purchased the license. You can use them to make your home page exude professionalism. There are many good ones, but I have listed four of my favorite websites. Check them out. Explore the websites. The images are spectacular. And who knows? You might find something like I did that will work perfectly for your website. So let's take a look at Getty Images and you can see the process involved in purchasing a professional photo online. Let's use our category birds like we have in the past and see what they have. So you have a lot of different kinds of birds. This is generic birds. You can categorize it by flying birds, love birds, uh, tropical birds. You can also categorize it on the other side. You can add an orientation whether it's horizontal or vertical. Um, let's just take a look and see. Aren't they beautiful? I mean, it's just the, the color and the detail is just stunning. So looking down to see if we have anything. All right, there we go. Let's take this parrot. He's pretty good. See how much he is. So here's our parrot and here's the purchase um, uh, agreement. And you can buy, this is a typical price range. An extra small one's 50, small one's 75 and up from there. So if you want, let's say, a small one, and then you're going to add it to the cart. And then if you want to view your cart, there it is like buying anything else. And then you can continue with your purchase. This is about the average range. Well, let's see another, all of these little birds here, a little bit more detail. Still again, your price ranges are about the same. That's the average prices you can expect to, to pay. And you can see the medium is a, a better resolution. You pay more for it. It's a larger size, but this is 72 DPI, and the medium is 300. All you need for your website is 72. You don't need anything more than that. Let's see what the extra small is. It's 72, too. 
Keep in mind, you can always search for images online by just typing in the search engines of Yahoo or Google. It's going to take you more time. It's adding some extra steps because those images will always be on other sites. So it'll refer you to the other sites. But let's just take a look. Let's do Yahoo and let's look for some flamingos. See what they've got. All right, you get into the Flamingo page, you want to hit Images. And then there are thousands and thousands and thousands of images of flamingos. Go over to any license and click. Any license gives you the most opportunities to find a picture. And free to modify, share, and use commercially is the least amount of pictures that you'll have access to. We've been dealing with public domains. Let's just go into public domain. And here are thousands more. Now, the other thing you can see is here the type. We can hit all. We can hit just photos. Maybe we just want a photo. Or maybe we want a graphic this time instead of a photo. You can also hit GIF. Let's see if there's any flying ones. Remember, that's the automated one. Nothing there. Um, portrait. Not sure there'll be anything there. Clip art, though. Clip art would be something you might want to use. Or a line drawing you might want to use on your site. So let's look for graphics this time. Maybe it'd do something different. And see a graphic that I like. Here's one right here. And this, if you look on the right, it tells you that it's on raw pixel. So you'll have to go on to raw pixel to get it, but that's fine. Hit view page. Let's see what the... Um, information the license information is and there it is it is beautiful i know this piece this is an audubon print um, and it is available it is free and it's in public domain always keep in mind you want to give credit to the author all you want to do is hit download and there you have it in imagery part two i'll show you how to optimize your images how to use sliders and where you can get video and audio online for free. You're going to love it. It'll be fun. So Lulu and I'll see you next time.